Last year, the YouTube algorithm recommended me this video by Steven Crowder. There are only two genders. Change my mind. At the time, this video made me pretty annoyed. I remember thinking, I wish I could have been there on that day, because I might have made a good case against him. But of course, that wouldn't have mattered. Anyone who makes a good case against Steven probably gets edited out of his videos anyway. I assumed that you had a penis when I have no idea if you have a penis or not. Um, and saying that people- I got a, uh, got a nice big penis there. Okay. I was initially going to record myself reacting to this clip, but I think it speaks for itself. I've got a nice big penis there. Okay. This video has continued to bother me for a year, not just because I think Steven Crowder uses very underhanded tactics to perpetuate his rhetoric, but also because he is wrong. And lots of people seem to agree that there are only two genders, and they are wrong too. So here's my case. There aren't two genders. There are no genders. But and stuff. In the beginning, before our species had language or the capacity to abstract anything, there were no genders. There were only people. This is how animals perceive the world. They don't have a concept of gender. They are just attracted to whatever they are attracted to, and they just feel the way they do. But once humans started to use language, we invented these concepts called man and woman. Why did these concepts emerge in the first place? Why didn't people just continue being like animals? The answer is that these concepts are useful. They are an attempt at describing reality and representing it as abstractions so that we can talk about it. So, yay, we've got these two genders. But there's a problem. They are not a perfect description of reality. There are all these people falling through the cracks that we missed. We have to figure out how to talk about these people that keep insisting that they don't fit neatly into these two categories. This is inevitable. We can try to change how we define man and woman, but there is no useful definition that doesn't end up excluding some people. The most obvious solution to all these other people is to lump them all together and call them a third gender or non-binary or something like that. This is definitely a better description of reality already, because it covers everyone, and many cultures do have something like this. But we have another problem immediately pop up. We have invented a word for these people and lumped them all together, but they keep complaining and being annoyed about it. Something about how they are not all the same. All the people in the man or woman categories agree that they all share something similar. But the people in our third category say the only thing they all share is that the previous system neglected them. The categories aren't fair, because the third category is just haphazardly whacked on, so that there is a word for everyone's gender. So let's abolish this category, and add in some new categories. There is a group of people here who say that they all share something. They call themselves a gender. Okay, let's make that a new category. Great, that's more like it. We now have a higher resolution way of talking and thinking about reality. But there is another problem. More people are accounted for, but there are still people falling through the cracks. Ah, we just need to bump up the resolution again. Let's add another category that some of these people all agree they belong to. Great, things are getting better, but still some people fall through the cracks. And also a group of people in the agender category are now claiming that they are a new gender. So we have to split that category. Things are definitely better than when we started. By making five genders, five categories, we have increased the resolution of our model of reality. We now have abstractions that cover more people, and a greater percentage of the population are happy with this classification system. So the logical conclusion is to keep adding categories and dividing existing categories until everyone is covered, until we have the perfect set of words in our language for talking about gender. But if we really continue ad infinitum. But if we really continue ad infinitum, if we really keep acknowledging more and more subtle differences, we end up in an interesting place. We end up with a unique gender for every single person. Which is true. Everyone has a unique gender. My experience and feelings of being a man are subtly different from other men. I could easily say that the subtle shade of masculinity that applies to me is a distinct gender. But this destroys the usefulness of having categories in the first place. It is functionally equivalent to our original state, where there wasn't even an idea of gender. That's because, and I want to be very clear about this, the concept of gender is fundamentally meaningless. 
There are no genders. It is just words we made up to make talking about our identities easier. And if you're interested in this, by the way, this is essentially just postmodernist philosophy. What I'm saying is, in its own way, a very crude representation of the views of postmodernist feminists like Judith Butler. I mean, they were, the, the point is that before you know, uh, 1948 with Simone de Beauvoir and then Judith Butler with modern, po sort of postmodernism feminism theory, gender and sex were effectively interchangeable. You can even look on legal documentation, depending on the permit, they are legally interchangeable. I mean, this is the way it's been with societies for millennia. We've had male and female. Um, so when you radically change that, you do have to have a number, in, in my opinion. Stephen's mistake is that he seems to think postmodernist gender theory is an objective theory that can give an exact number of genders. The point is that the number of genders is completely arbitrary, and he argues that without a set number we can't create a good legal system. This is not a good argument. It's like saying classifying all insect species is difficult, therefore insects don't exist. Plus, Mary Jo Frog showed in her work that building a legal system without gender might actually be easier. You should read it, Stephen. Then you can be cool, like me. It really does suck that men are so rarely awarded custody. Ooh, you're very frog today. Huh? And, by the way, postmodernists don't just apply this kind of analysis to gender. They do it to pretty much all language and theory. That's what postmodernism is. It's not a scary ideology. It's just acknowledging that language and abstractions are never perfect descriptions of reality and never will be. So why do so many people on the left keep inventing new genders, when we can see gender is just a meaningless societal construct for categorizing people? Again, because it's useful. If we just say there is no gender, the conversation stops. We need these categories to talk about gender and how it affects our lives. And if we invent some more genders to cover more people, our conversation about gender can be a bit more sophisticated. Part 2. The Play. I want you, yes you, to imagine some young children in a playground. They are playing a fun game called, what animal are you? Susie picks a horse, because she loves horses. George picks a tiger, because he thinks they are cool. Jamie picks a bat, because he's a psychopath. And then Casey picks a dolphin, Ah! But Susie gets upset suddenly. She says the game is only land animals, not sea animals. She says Casey can't pick the dolphin. It's not a valid choice, according to the rules Susie has suddenly made up. Casey continues to insist she is a dolphin, but Susie just throws more and more of a tantrum until Casey gets upset. What the fuck? Seriously, like, silent for one hour, and then I turn on the microphone, and this. I will murder you. To us, looking at this game from the outside, the solution is obvious. This is just a made up game. The rules don't matter. Why doesn't Susie just let Casey be a dolphin? A normal adult would intervene by telling Susie to just let Casey be a fucking dolphin for fuck's sake! What does it matter what animal other people pick for themselves anyway? Of course, the point I'm making here is pretty obvious. We are all playing a game called, what gender are you? I can't stress this enough. There is very little difference between a game children make up in a playground and the way we play as a society. The only difference is that the stakes are higher. And there are a lot of Susies out there pointlessly saying that certain genders aren't valid. Don't be a Susie. When someone tells you they are a gender you don't know about, just be like, okay, cool. That's the chill way of playing the game that keeps everyone happy. Don't be a Susie. Part 3. Does this matter for real though? When linguists go and look at the languages of very isolated cultures, unaware of the wonders of the modern world, they find something interesting. Many of these languages don't have words for a lot of colours. By the way, Vox has done a great piece about this which you should check out. There is an argument that languages create words for colours in a predictable pattern and, I think, it's super interesting. That's just me though. You can create a nice diagram similar to the one I showed before with all wavelengths, and then we start classifying areas into categories. As the culture and language grows larger, it starts to create more of these categories to represent more colors. 
Many of you might be surprised to know that English didn't have a word for orange until 500 years ago. Before that, it was just called red. Yeah, the entire Middle Ages happened, with people calling this and this red. These days, it's difficult for us to comprehend that these weren't considered separate colours. Other languages categorise colours differently. In reality, every distinct shade is its own unique colour, and how we divide them up is based on our culture. For example, some Asian languages have completely separate words for light blue and dark blue. Why does this matter? Well, there have been experiments showing that people from these cultures are better at distinguishing subtle differences in shades of blue. Having these words actually changes the way they perceive the world. It allows them to see different shades of colour more vividly. I think you can all see where this is going. Stop fighting about new gender categories because in the end, it's all just a language game. When you say there are only two genders, you're just being a Susie. Don't be a Susie. You're preventing our language from evolving into something that is better at talking about these issues. Because maybe, just maybe, when we add some of these words into our culture, we will start to see the many colours of people's identities more vividly. It doesn't matter who you are. Your gender is valid. Thanks for watching everyone. If you liked this video, feel free to hit the like button. If you didn't like it, feel free to hit dislike. Or you can be neither. All like-dislike identities are valid. This is my first video, and I have more coming, so subscribe if you want to see more content from me.